In this video, I am about to start building a cryptocurrency portfolio and documenting the journey. This video, however, was originally released exclusively in my Patreon about three weeks ago, so it's outdated. If you would like to be up to date on this, check out the link in the description below. When I build this portfolio, as you'll see later on in this video, the very first move that I make is probably going to shock you because it's very contrary to the world and God kind of shows up while I'm in the middle of doing it. So without any further delay, here we go. Like, subscribe, and commence the video. So right now, if you were to go onto YouTube and search for 2024 cryptocurrency portfolio, you would see a lot of influencers making a portfolio and documenting their journey into this bull run. One thing that you'll notice almost every single one of them does without miss is they all include a big percentage that goes to Bitcoin and Ethereum. We are not doing that at all. In my opinion, the time to buy Bitcoin was a year ago when it was down at $15,000 per coin. It's already up to 45K. I don't think that you're gonna make the life-changing money with a $2,000 portfolio investing into Bitcoin. Perhaps Ethereum is much more of a safer play in that regards, but again, it's already a very mature project. I'm going to be very calculated, very surgical in where I place the money that we have to work with here. One of the many challenges that you face when you're investing with a smaller portfolio, like two or $3,000, and no offense if that's a big portfolio for you, but there's a lot of money out there and this is a small portfolio to work with. One of the big issues that you have is you have to be very calculated and surgical with what you choose to invest in because you can't invest in absolutely everything. And if you are somebody that's managing a bigger portfolio than two or $3,000, this will still be applicable to you. We're gonna balance this out into correct percentages that match our parameters, but you might have to tweak it according to the numbers that you're working with. I just spent the last hour and a half going through about a year and a half's worth of prophetic notes that I've written down having to do with cryptocurrency, and there was a ton in it. I may have missed some of the cryptos that I've heard words of knowledge about or little nuggets here and there, but I've got a pretty extensive list here, and I've eliminated some of them so far. What I can tell you is anything from this column, 42 down to 50, most of these are probably going to be removed. They're done so. Goodbye. Now this list is only penciled in. It's tentative, not finalized. After I make this extensive list, I have to go through their market caps, their circulating supplies, see how their social media is. I'm going to put it through a few different stress tests and filters to eliminate the junk and stick with the gems. This is a tentative final list. I am gonna be adding and removing a few as we go, but here's what we've got so far. And before I tell you that list, by no means freak out or worry or panic if the list seems long to you. If you don't know what any of these cryptocurrencies are, you do not have to invest in any of them. You might just have one or two that you wanna keep an eye on or simply me sharing the journey as I invest might be something that you take principles out of for your own walk in life but do not let this list overwhelm you at all. From A to Z, we have Arweave Arbitrum, AVAX with two tokens in the ecosystem, PancakeSwap, Doge, Polkadot with two tokens in the ecosystem, Filecoin, Phantom, HBAR, two tokens in the ecosystem, ICP, KDA, I might get rid of KDA, all right? Then we got Link, Lunk, Near, One, OP, Rune, Cedify, Shiba, Solana with one, potentially a few more ecosystem coins, Uniswap, VeChain, and then we've got some of those X coins, the XTC, XLM, XRP, XTZ, and ZRX, which may not make the cut. And when you scroll down, there's also C98 as well as Electronium. This list is not complete. It is just penciled in at the moment. I am probably going to add to it a few Moonshot potential lottery micro gems. And I'll also likely end up removing at least one or two of those coins that I did just mention. Now, I know there's some of you who are looking at that and saying, that is way too many. Why am I in this Patreon? It doesn't really matter all that much because you don't have to buy every single one of these. You know, you might just have a couple in here that you want to keep an eye on because they're in your portfolio. You might just want to listen to some of how I make my decisions based on technical analysis, market trends, but also what I hear from the Lord. And then just simply apply that to your own portfolio that you've built. This is just penciling in what I might be working with Additionally, because I do think that we're starting a little bit late and there are corrections to come, I'm going to have a large cash position for a good amount of the start until we have good buying opportunities in front of us. On this list, you will notice that the blue chips, your main industry leaders, the big coins like Cardano, Solana, Polkadot, they have ecosystem tokens listed. And the reason being is that those big leaders have already seen substantial gains so far, but the tokens within the ecosystem still have not had their time to shine. In crypto, there's this phenomena of 
money being rotated throughout the industry. So you'll have these blue chips take off, but then there's a lag time until that money flows into these smaller, um, higher risk plays. But sometimes these higher risk plays have a decent probability of being successful because number one, we know this rotation of money flowing throughout crypto historically proves true. You've got Bitcoin, you've got altcoins, you've got meme coins, then you've got the poop coins. And so historically, this is how money flow works. But also whenever there's development going on within an ecosystem, there are needed projects and tools. So Avalanche, I've listed XAVA, which is an IDO within Avalanche. So new projects that want to receive funding can go through that one. And the market cap on that is minuscule. It's only 20 million at this time of making it, whereas Avalanche's market cap, I would have to check it, but it's in the tens of billions. Perhaps a more simple and better example is how I don't include BNB on this list. I am not using the Binance coin. However, I do have PancakeSwap. So I'm still getting the exposure to Binance Smart Chain and PancakeSwap has a much lower market cap. However, we know historically that everyone uses cake when they're in a bull run. Anybody that wants involvement with the BNB you know, ecosystem and other tokens, they go through PancakeSwap. So that's just an example of why with the bigger blue chips, I also have a few smaller ecosystem coins that I personally think are going to do a lot better when it comes to return on the money. So like I mentioned, this is definitely going to be a tentative list. As I just created a column that covers the market cap for a lot of these, part of me was thinking, you know, a lot of these ecosystem tokens like XAVA or Joe, or if you skip down here to HBAR especially, and also the two in Cardano, MinSwap and SundaySwap, it requires that extra level of knowing how to set up a MetaMask wallet or any other type of a wallet, how to find the contract address on CoinMarketCap, and then how to use a DEX to swap your coin into the token. And I'm not entirely sure that I want to turn this video series into all of that. So I'm likely going to get rid of SaucerSwap and Indigo. But what I would recommend is that if you understand everything I just talked about, you should probably research how to do that and maybe consider throwing a little bit of a moonshot into some of those because I think that in the same way that we've seen pancake swap do incredibly well on the BNB chain, I would not be surprised if you see a similar thing with saucer swap and even radium with Solana. Or perhaps better than both of those could be the min swap or Sunday swap that's on Cardano. So I might get rid of some of those right now, but before I do, I just want to drop that alpha for those of you who understand it and would perhaps want to create a little moonshot token bag in those ecosystems. Sorry about my dog. I have not decided if I'll keep or leave Joe, but I definitely am gonna keep XAVA. Right now I'm going to delete these two as I just mentioned. So I'm also gonna delete ZRX and probably C98. I'm going back and forth on Electronium, the last one, ETN. I have this core principle that I like to incorporate with crypto is that if I ever had to get my crypto off of an exchange, can I? With most of these, I can. Electronium, I can't because I'm not from the UK. Like you need to go through their whole process and I just don't have a wallet set up for them. That being said, I'm still trying to figure out if I'll keep Electronium or not. The same applies to Arbitrum and Optimism. I should probably put Matic on this list too. There's a bunch of these Ethereum layer two scaling solutions that I think will do incredibly great in this bull run in the years to come. For what it's worth, this is just a little bit of a blueprint backbone to get us started. I'm going to keep a good cash position until we have great buying opportunities because they come around quite often in crypto. I never want to FOMO in. Ideally, purchase only on red days when the market's down. But we have enough of a blueprint to get started here. I'm going to start breaking down some percentages and then take the 2K sum that we have to invest, keynote how much I want to keep in cash, keynote the percentage concentration I want to put the bigger positions in versus smaller ones, and then I'll update you after all that. I want you to pay attention to something pretty important here. I've got the account opened up and you can tell it is clearly funded. That is 2000 USDT inside of this KuCoin account. As I was looking at some charts about to make a move to purchase Terra Luna Classic, I got this unction within me that I want to give the first fruits of this, of what I'm doing here. I'm actually going to take 10% out of the account right away and tithe somewhere. Now, this is not a tithe on any increase that I've received, but this is literally just dedicating the work to God. Now, this is an organization right here that I recently felt like God has put it on my heart to be sowing into. It's called Take the Nations. Um, 
Daniel is evangelizing all throughout Africa, reaching hundreds of the, hundreds of thousands of people at a time. Um, that's a funny video. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to give to them a quick giving principle that I like to incorporate is I will spend money on credit. Okay. I like to collect credit points. I think that there's a lot of wisdom in using a credit card if you're responsible with it. But I tithe on debit. So I I spend on credit, but I give on debit. And the reason being is that if you give on credit, that's not actually realized by you. You didn't have to sacrifice anything. You didn't have to give anything up until like a month and a half later once you finally pay it off. So I personally, I tithe on debit even though I spend on credit. So here we go. Might have to log in here. Drop this down. There you go. And yeah, so now I'm going to pull $200 out of the account and use that to put it back in the bank account that we just paid from. So there you have it. We are working with an $1,800 account. We got some kingdom credit working for us behind the scenes. Now let's start making some trades.